Hi, I'm Philip from the HANA Academy. In this series of videos, we're looking at the XS Advanced model, which was introduced with SPS 11 of HANA. In this video, we're going to look at logging in and uh, setting up appropriate users to do development when we're working with the uh, runtime controller and the uh, command line interface locally. So the first thing is uh, we just recall if we do XS API, from previous videos, we made a connection, uh, so we're actually now set up and we've got authentication to connect to the uh, uh, controller runtime uh, on the HANA server. So what we could next do is login. So we can just put in a simple access login, and then we can give it dash u for a username. And for example, we could use our default user that the admin created when they installed HANA. So we could say xsa underscore admin in our case, and it will prompt you for the password. So I enter the password and then it authenticates. And notice that it makes a first prompt. It says there are two existing spaces and it basically says, which space do you want to connect to? 01 prod or SAP. Um, so what I'll do for now is I'll just put in a zero and it should connect to the space called prod. So what we can see, we've been able to log in as the uh, full administrator and we've got actually an organization and a space. Now these are things that were set up when the administrator or whoever installed HANA and installed the runtime as part of that procedure. So as well as creating the XSA underscore admin user or potentially with a different name, the admin user and password, also set up a default org organization and a default space. Uh, and by default, it typically prompts you to say, it prompts to say prod uh, as a default. So it may often be that. Basically, you have this concept that as well as users, you can organize them into organizations, maybe teams and spaces. For example, you can have uh, production, development, uh, testing, all sorts of different uh, uh, environments that you want to work with from a development and, and deployment perspective and have them all on the same machine. You don't have to have different machines. So that's a really nice thing about uh, XS Advanced compared to uh, prior capabilities in HANA. So we can see we're connected to the initial organization and the space prod. However, it's not really very uh, good that we would be using the administrator fire uh, user here, uh, the full administrator just to do development. So what we're going to do is go out and make a developer user. But before we do that, I'm going to log out. So now we can see we've done our log out. So we're not connected uh, anymore. What we will now do is go and create a user. So to do that, I can use the uh, security option uh, from the dev workbench. So I'm going to click on security and log on. Uh, I shall use a system user uh, at this point to create my new user. So now I'll log in. So I can see the list of users. We can see we've got, for example, the XSA underscore admin user. So what I'm going to do is create a new user. So right mouse button, a new user. And I'm going to call him dev user as he's going to be my developer. She'll give him a password and confirm it. Of course, you can do this through SQL. Uh, you don't have to do it using this UI. You can do it in HANA Studio, uh, whatever you want to do. So I'm now going to uh, save that, basically create my user. But there is something else we need to do here is if we want them to be able to use the XS uh, advanced capabilities for development, we need to go to this third tab, the application role collections, which is new in SPS 11. And for this user, I'm going to add uh, an XS. I won't make him full admin. I'll make him a user, which is basically a developer on the XS controller. And I'll also make him uh, have access to the uh, uh, authorization so that he can uh, display those, for example. But of course, you can choose whichever rights you want to give to uh, whichever developer user you're going to create. So that's that's completely up to you. So let's now save that again. So we've now saved these authorizations. So um, basically, we've got controller user means basically a, a developer, but not a full administrator. So it's better to use that and potentially consider disabling the XSA admin account or uh, uh, making another account that has the admin authorizations, as you might typically do with system if you want to be really secure. OK, so that's our dev user created. Now, there is something you need to do at this point. Um, you need to log in because typically by default with HANA, you need to change the password on first login. And when you're working and logging in to the controller, the XS Advanced controller uh, from the XS command line interface, there's no mechanism to change your password the first time at this point. So what, what you should do is for dev user, for example, uh, what I'll do is I'll log out from system. 
and I'll just try to log in here uh, as that user. So let's just try it. Password one. And notice it prompts, prompts me to change my password. So I'm going to put the old one in and give a new password and change. And now it says forbidden. Don't worry, we didn't authorize the user to actually go into the uh, security area of the Web IDE at this point or the Web Developer Workbench. That's not the point. Uh, what we have done, though, is we've just changed that password. So it's not going to prompt us to change the password. Uh, so we'll be able to log in now. So now we've created our user, we're also going to need to do some more things uh, from the administration side. So if I'm just going to log in again as the full administrator. And I'm going to do a couple of operations. The first thing is I'm going to create an organization and a space that my developer user can work in. So I'm actually going to use a command again. All of this is in the, uh, the reference. I'm going to actually say access and create space. And I'm going to call it dev for development area. OK. Um, and that's one that's actually suited to the organization called Initial. Now, we, what we might want to do is maybe create even another organization. We could actually do create uh, org, and we could make one. Maybe we'll call this one HANA Academy, because I'm going to be a developer for the HANA Academy. Now, hopefully, you spotted the deliberate mistake, because I want you to see this, because it's something that happens all the time. You forget to put the XS in front of it. Um, so one thing we could do is uh, we could do create org. Or another thing we could do is we could rename. So as we've got one called initial, maybe we'll just, the administrator didn't know what we would call it. We might as well just make that one our academy one. So we can say rename org, and then from initial, which was the name of the org we already have, to HANA Academy. And again, in the command line reference, you'll get uh, all the renames and create some whatevers. Um, now, there are a couple of other commands. If you want to see which spaces and orgs exist, you can do that. You can type spaces, sorry, xs spaces it will list you all the spaces that exist so here we should be fine we have prod that was done by in the installation dev that we just created and there's also one called sap that's created internally uh, for sap use um, so it's not one you would use normally directly yourself um, and if you want to look at the orgs you can just type in orgs of course access orgs and then it will give you a list of the organizations and we should have one there called hana academy it's renamed the one we had called initial Okay, so now we've gone th done, done that. What we do need to now to do is to make sure that the right users can access the right spaces and organizations. So what I'm going to do here is actually set up uh, an org and a space role for our developer user. So I'm going to say XS and then set org role. And then the name of our user is dev user. And I'm going to give him access to the organization HANA Academy. And I'm going to give him the right of org manager. So he's going to be having good rights in terms of that. And again, the reference guide will give you more details on what options and what, what kind of uh, authorizations are possible. What I'm also going to do is access and I'm going to set a space role. Sounds like becoming an astronaut, but actually it means a role to the space that you've created. So again, here for dev user, and this time I'm going to give him access to the dev space, the one we just created, because he's a developer, and I'm going to say he's a space developer. So uh, that means that he's got the rights, basically development, not full admin as the admin user has, but just development rights on doing that. You actually have to put in the username and then the org name. So in that case, it would be Hannah Academy. Then you need to put in the dev, and then you, which is your space name, and then your actual role you're going to give them. And you see the space manager, space developer, and space auditor. So it's going to be a space developer. And now that's done. So that was actually quite a useful mistake that I made there because it showed you that uh, uh, you can get quite some online help if you haven't got the reference guide PDF handy. You can always put in an XS command, for example, uh, such as uh, 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 set space role and then it's going to give you some kind of help it's going to tell you what you actually need to put in to use that command okay so now we've done that we've actually set up a user a dev user what we can do is log out so you can log out 
as the administrator. Of course, you need to put access at the beginning. That's something you'll get used to. And now we can log in as a developer user. So we can do access login. There are shortcuts, for example, L should be login. Uh, uh, these again you'll find in the reference guide. I'll use the full command names because it's easier to remember the actual name, even if you have to type a few more characters. Um, so access login and then the user parameter. Oh, we forgot to put it in, so we need to specify the username. It's going to be dev user and it's going to prompt us for the password of dev user. And of course, it knows the server, the API URL. We set that up previously. So I'm going to log in as dev user. He's authenticated. And notice that we go actually in there, and it's, it says dev user HANA Academy. And by default, it's in prod the space. But uh, it doesn't really have the rights to use that. So what we need to do is to make sure we change our space to the one we have the rights to, which is dev. Uh, so to do that, we can actually use something called the access target command. And if we change that to, say, target dev, what it will do, it will now say that we're using a dev. And we actually have to specify uh, whether it's an organization or a space. So I made a little mistake. I was a bit too trigger happy there. Uh, and it's actually the space dev. So I need to put a dash S and then dev, which is the name of my space. So you can actually use target if you want to move between which organization or space you're currently working in. OK, so now we are logged in as the developer user. We've got an organization with the right name. We've got a space set up for development. We've got the rights. Um, the next step is we can actually now start writing our first application using the uh, command line interface.